Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. And this is going to be episode number four of how to build an electric guitar tutorial series. And in this one right here, we're going to get into taking our paper drawings that we created over the last couple of videos and turning them into these here MDF templates that we're going to use to make these guitars. We've got these guys right here. We've got some more down here. We're going to get all into it now. And uh, we're going to dig in. We're going to go through all the tools and, and tips and tricks that it takes to make these things. And we're going through the whole process. Anyway, I hope you all stick around and watch it. And if you dig it, I hope you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. Okay, so it's time to start making the templates for these, this uh, new guitar here. I've got my stuff ready to go. What I did now, I took my original drawing. This isn't it, this is a copy. I took my original drawing and I took it down to a local print shop here. And I had to make me four copies. And it's actually, uh, it's nice, it's a little heavier paper than the other one. Uh, once I, w what I have to do now is I have to cut this thing up. And I don't want to cut up my original, because I want to preserve it. And I'm going to have to cut a couple of different, uh, this is going to cut into the neck. And so I've got to have, I'm basically going to cut up two of these to make my templates out of it. And then it saved me two more for later, plus the original. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut up some, I've got some MDF right here. That's three quarter MDF. I think that's the best stuff for making templates. You could use half inch or even quarter inch if you wanted to, but because uh, of my router bits and whatnot, I just kind of like using the three quarter. I use MDF and I'll take and I'll cut these paper, uh, the paper drawing out and I'm going to glue it on top with some of this. Uh, this is basically um, uh, contact cement, spray contact cement. So you spray it on there, it sticks it really nice. And I'll tell you what, I've got some old templates up here that have had these, uh, this paper glued on them for an awful long time and it holds up really well. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in a little bit closer. We're going to start cutting up these parts and head over to the table saw and start cutting up my MDF and glue them together. We could start drilling and routing and, and, and getting all the pockets and everything done. So anyway, uh, let me pull the camera in and we're gonna get going on that right now. Okay, because I really like my Rubo workbench I just built. Incidentally, if you'd like to see uh, see me building that thing, I'll put a link up there to this video, to the videos of me building it. So I'm going to go ahead and spread out some of this construction paper, cover it up because that contact's meant to be awfully messy stuff. So I've tried different ways of gluing this uh, paper onto the MDF. Uh, different types of glue and different things and I found that this spray on uh, contact cement works the best. Contact cement, cement is supposed to be sprayed on both surfaces, you wait till they dry and you stick it together. But I found I just spray, spray it on the MDF, stick the paper to it, you got a little wiggle room, you've got enough time to move the stuff around. It sticks great, it stays on for as long as you need it to stay on there for. It's really good stuff. Okay, so I'm getting ready to cut this guy out right here, but I wanted to point out something. Now, I drew on the fretboard, and heck, I drew the strings on it for that matter, uh, but I'm gonna cut it to where I'm cutting the fretboard off, and I'm gonna cut the little cap off the top, too. Uh, I wanna get it down to just the, uh, the, the actual neck itself without the fretboard and without the cap on it, because that's what I have to cut out first before I glue those things on later. So this is gonna be a template for the main body of the neck. And uh, so therefore, I'm going to cut all that stuff out. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out before I started cutting up on the thing. So as you may notice, that's a resaw blade on that bandsaw. I don't know why I just didn't change it out. It would have taken a few minutes and made it a lot easier to saw that stuff. Like Manny says, a lazy man works twice as hard. 
So I'm just cutting this stuff out anyway. Now, it doesn't have to get real close to the line. I'm probably uh, anywhere from a 16th to an eighth off the line. I'm, of course, I'm gonna run it through the router table and everything and uh, straighten all that stuff up afterwards. Okay, so uh, now that we've got everything uh, sawed out on the bandsaw and it's rough cut to shape, you can see that's just close to the line but it's not right on it. Uh, now what we've got to do is we've got to bring this everything right to the lines. Now this one is totally done freehand. By the way, I've already done this one. Uh, but I just was very careful to bring it right to the line. I'm trying to split the line in two. So that one's completely done. And I did this on my spindle sander and I have a 4x24 oscillating belt sander. Two really great tools to have if you're guitar building. Of course, you could uh, take each of these pieces, clamp them in your vise, and use a combination of files and uh, and like sandpaper, uh, glued blocks, wood, and everything. But it's really critical to get these lines perfectly square. So uh, that's a definitely a way to do it. It takes a lot a lot longer, but uh, but I'm going to show you how I do it. I use I use my router table. I use my 4x24 belt sander and I use my, uh, my spindle sander over there too. So, uh, and so what I'm going to do now, this one, like I said, is totally done by hand, free-handed, and it came out good. <clears throat> but with all these pieces that I want to be absolutely dead straight on the side, this is my fingerboard uh, uh, template. I want these to be absolutely perfectly straight, so I'm going to use a straight edge that I know I just ran this through my joiner and I checked it with my precision straight edges and it's perfectly straight. I'm gonna use this to cut my straight lines for, for uh, this guy right here, for my neck profile template, and also for my uh, neck template too. I'm gonna do straight edge on that. And then this curvy stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and do by hand on my uh, spindle sanders. So anyway, I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer and point it down on here. We're gonna use some double-sided sticky tape to glue our templates onto our uh, our straight edge, and we're gonna get rolling with this right now. Yeah, so that double-sided sticky tape works perfectly for this type of thing. Um, when I glue, uh, when I stick uh, like a straight edge like I'm doing right here, I try to split that line right in half. I take the pencil line or whatever line is drawn in there and just split it right in half, trying to be as accurate as possible. So that's a great little router table right there. Uh, uh, I love it. I've got the back uh, the vacuum line coming in the back of the fence, and I got one coming out from the bottom. And look at it; almost no dust is coming off of that thing whatsoever. It really, really works well. I love it. Checking it here for straight. It turned out really well. I was very pleased with that. I'm checking the width on it now too. And this guy here is supposed to be 111. 1 and 11 sixteenths. That's what you're looking for between the nut and this is the 22nd fret in this case. I checked it before and it was uh, supposed to be those measurements and I checked it out. And so that thing is just right. I like it. So I just had a really great idea. I've got to use double sided sticky tape on these paper surfaces. So rather than doing that and then ruining the paper surface, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this packing tape shipping tape on there first. Just like that. Now, my double-sided sticky tape will stick to this tape. When I peel it off, my paper will still be really good. That was a great idea. Because here when I peel it off, it's probably going to tear up that paper a little bit. But I'll probably put something else on top of that anyhow. So. Anyway, so I'm going to do this guy next here. And because this is already the exact right width, both ends, I'm going to use this guy as my template for this guy. Okay? 
I can't believe I never thought about that putting packing tape over the uh, paper templates before this. Unbelievable. Such a stupid little thing and it was really a great idea. Now those templates will last for forever, maybe. Unless I tear them up doing something else. That's a grizzly spindle sander. That thing is just an awesome tool. I love it. I use it all the time. Really a great addition to my shop. I've had it for about a year, year and a half now. Hey, do you see where I just pulled off that little piece of paper? Whenever you're sanding these edges with the paper templates on there, it tends to curl up that paper on the edge a little bit. And I take a piece of 220 sandpaper when that starts happening, and I just rub it right across the edge very lightly, and it cuts that piece of paper off of there. It gives you a really crisp, clean edge on your uh, templates. There's another great tool right there. That's a rigid oscillating uh, a belt sander. That's a 4x24 belt on there. What an awesome tool. I mean, it was you know relatively inexpensive. I just bought it at one of the big box stores. And I use that thing all the time. I really do. Really great tool. Great tool. Perfect for building guitars, really. So this is that, uh, that profile, neck profile piece. I'm using that straight edge on that to make sure everything is just perfect. Um, really all I use that template for is the main layout before I bandsaw out the neck. Um, but I still want it to be just as perfect as I can make it. So here's something I want to point out. Whenever I, I draw my templates out, I try to draw them as accurately as possible, of course. Um, but I want to constantly keep rechecking myself. So, and this is something I just checked, and I'm off just a half of a pencil thickness, but I wanna, I wanna point it out. So the top, the top of this uh, neck here, that's gonna be where the fretboard sits. And the neck, like I said uh, in an earlier video, I like my necks to be an inch and a quarter thick. So now that I've routed that and I've straightened that so it's perfectly straight, this part's gonna actually taper down with the body, but most of this gets cut out anyhow for the, uh, for the uh, pickup in here. So that line, I'm not talking about this line because that's tapered a little bit, but that bottom line, I want that to run perfectly parallel with the top of my uh, neck here. So just as a, a check, as I was going along, I wanted to check and be sure. So I used a straight edge here since, like I said, this tapers off a bit. I used a straight edge and I measured this end here. In the center of my line, I have one and a quarter inches. Now I come down here and I'm one and a quarter inches actually on the inside of the line. So I'm just about, this probably isn't going to mark on there, but I could see the dent in the tape. So, so what I want to do when I route this, I want to use my straight edge and I'm going to put it centered on the line here. And I'm going to put that on my little mark I just made right there. And now that with this plane here, this surface will plane out perfectly with that surface there. So, I just wanted to point that out. When you're making templates, you always constantly go back and recheck yourself to uh, check your widths and dimensions and things like that, because this ought to keep that for quite a while and hopefully be able to lay out some necks uh, with it. So, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I just remeasured that. I'm going to stick this uh, straight edge on there and then route it and get that, and that'll plane out parallel with that service right there. Okay, so we've got all the main uh, templates cut out. We've got our body, our main body shape. We've got our neck, uh, neck template. We've got our fingerboard template. And I, I have other fingerboard templates, but I did this one because I changed the width slightly on this particular guitar. So we got that guy and we've got the neck profile too. So uh, 
What I want to do though before I finish my cutting up templates is I've got to do a couple of more body templates. So in this one I'm going to do the two pickup routes in it. <clears throat> And in the other one, I'm going to do uh, the, well, I'm also going to drill the, the uh, control knob holes, the 3 8 holes for that. In this one, I'm going to do the uh, control cavity, both the outer uh, uh, area and the recess part in the middle. I'm going to do that on this guy here. And this one is going to be my neck pocket, and this one's going to be a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace out the guitar body to about here, and then I'm going to square this straight up. And I'll tell you why I do that, because if I don't, if I cut this shape and I cut my neck pocket into this, I'm going to use this to route my, uh, route my neck pocket in. The pressure from that router, this gets so thin over here, and on other guitars that are double cutaways, it's so thin on both these top edges, that'll push that, uh, that'll push that MDF over if you're holding it too hard with the router. So I like to square this straight up, so I got a lot of meat up here to protect the, uh, to, to strengthen the, the pocket for the router. Anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So I know a lot of guys, they will, uh, they'll use just a square template um, without drawing the body shape on it, on their templates for let's say the, the pickups or the neck pocket or whatever, and they'll just use a straight line down the middle to line everything up. But I really like having as many reference points as possible when I'm lining everything up. So I always go around and I'll cut out the body shape itself as well as cut out the neck pocket or the pickup or whatever. And that way I've got not only the center line to go by, I'm also checking it on the, uh, referencing the edge of the body too, um, against the edge of the guitar body or another template or whatever. So I try to give myself as many, uh, as many reference points as possible, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm just double-sided sticky taping that down and I'll do everything except for that top. Like I said, I like to leave that extra meat on the top so when I go to cut my neck pocket in there, I'm not, uh, I'm not bending over the very thin edges that will be there. Now I've made these two templates. That one's going to have the uh, pickups in it and the control uh, uh, holes, drilling for the control holes. The other one's going to have the neck pocket in it. And the third one is going to have the uh, control cavity in it that I make. And uh, let's see, I'll probably make another one too. If I think about it, I'll tell you. So here I'm just doing the standard thing. I'm, I'm uh, using my drill press to uh, get rid of as much of that wood in there as possible, or MDF rather. And then I'll just stick my uh, template on it and route out those holes. Now, this is a template from a different guitar that I'm simply using for the, um, uh, the pickup route anyway, because that's, that's a good size. I've, I've used it before and it, it worked out really well for these pickups. And that's why I'm using that. But, uh, but here again, you can drill that out and use files and things like that to get those holes just right too. So, but once you have templates, it's better to use the templates. Well, guys, I think we ought to leave it about there for now. Come on back next week, and we're going to use our laser, and we're going to line up that neck, uh, that neck template into the body template for our neck pocket. Anyway, I really enjoyed doing this. I've made many templates over the last few years, and I get a little bit better every time I do it. And, uh, and I learn something new every time I do it, too. Anyway, I hope somebody out there got a little something out of this. And uh, so thanks for watching. God bless you, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you on the next one.